properties on the island that the Gullahs didn't own and started timbering. That's what created what we call the development of the island to what it is today. It became a golf destination when Arnold Palmer won a tournament in 1969. We kind of rejuvenated his career and really everybody who focused on golf, it's like if Tiger Woods won a, pro won a tournament now, you say, hey, where did Tiger win at? He's back. Well, that's the way it was with Arnold Palmer. Arnold Palmer was back. Everybody was happy he was back because Arnie, Arnie was the king in those days. So uh, they weren't aware that he went. He won at Hilton Head. So Hilton Head became a place that golfers wanted to come to. That, that helped the, the growth of Hilton Head dramatically and more golf courses and more golf courses. Right now you probably have about 20 golf courses on the island. You've got more than 40 in the county. But over that hundred years that the Gullah inhabited the island. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Sorry to slow you guys down. That's okay. You didn't slow us down any. You're, you're right on time. You, you missed the first bill. That's an important bill. for maybe 15, 15, 10 minutes so far, not counting the minutes of interruption, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, we're going to pull off in another two or three minutes. Of course, that, you know, that's one of the reasons why the Gullahs, Gullahs became what they are, who they are, because their culture itself basically reverted back for that last hundred years to who they were when they came from Africa. Their food ways were remained the same. They kept eating rice, of course, and kept cooking the gullah dishes. Our arts and crafts, they kept using the sweet grass baskets. You're familiar with sweet grass baskets? Right. Okay, kept making the, the nets and stuff for fishing, and of course, uh, making the small boats they call bateaus. But uh, basically, the language, if you hear some people even on Hilton Head, and Hilton Head is probably is more uh, mixed island than, than many of the Gullah Islands along the coast. Hilton Head is predominantly white now, of course. It's about 45,000 permanent residents here, and it's still only about 2,500, 2,800 Gullahs. I think the last census said 2,780. So, you know, the Gullah population maintains stability, but a lot more white people, a lot more Hispanics. More Hispanics are here than Gullahs. The Hispanics outnumber the Gullahs on Hilton at three to one. So the culture is evolving on the island. The language is changing quite a bit. But there are still some people on the island that have, made, that have that lived there all their lives and lived in pockets of this island all their lives, and, and their language is slightly different from mine. You, you probably wouldn't be able to understand them, but I can if we had a conversation. You say, what are they saying? You want, you want to know what they're saying. I mean, D can't understand some of them. I mean, D, D, the native Falunum, and he's just younger. Mm. And, uh, you know, he's a Gullah man. Question, sir? Uh, so, the slave trade didn't, well, the, the legal slave trade ended in 1802. 1808. 1808. Yeah. But they kept bringing uh, in new slaves. Illegally, illegally yes. Illegally. Yeah, the Portuguese 60. went down to, came in and went to Brazil. That's how the Brazilians became Portuguese. You know, if you notice all the South American countries, all of them are what? Portuguese. No, it's Spanish. 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 Spanish, but only one country down there is Portuguese. Portuguese. Yeah, yeah. yeah and Brazil. And what's the reason for that? The Portuguese brought slaves in late. They came in from, from Angola with their slaves, and their slave, their slave trade passed beyond the legal period from 1808 to 1850 is when they continued their slave trade and they went 
to Brazil and then came up. So and we, we submit that that's where the term Gullah came from. So it makes sense that you all were able to maintain a stronger cultural connection to your African roots because a lot of the slaves were fresh from Africa when they got here as opposed to... Well, the late ones the late were fresh, ones. but the old ones weren't. The, the old ones who had been here, they're the ones that probably came up with that name. Right. Yeah, they were slighting the late one, but it makes sense that the late ones lingered along the coast. Because as the slave trade were basically abolished, less, less planters, African. less planters came to the to the coast right. looking to buy slaves. So when they came in, they kind of smuggled them in and kind of infiltrated them along the coast into the plantations along the coast. Because the plantations along the coast had already been basically, you would say, saturated with slaves. Right. More slaves on the plantation of the coast than anywhere else. That's why. If you travel these islands now, if you go to Charleston, how many have been to Charleston? Been to Charleston? Is yeah. that a predominantly black city? Yeah, I see. Yeah. yeah. It's about 80% black. Charleston is 80% black. And so is Savannah. Yeah. Right, that's, so, the, that's the reasons. So, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. That's I'm analyzing. You're you know, bringing it up. Go ahead. So, yeah, she got one earlier. Now, then you can come with yours. The Gullahs are African. Africa's Afrocentric people. They're not African African. They're Africa Afro American just like you are. Okay. Yeah, but their 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 link is a little bit closer than yours. Now of course you might be more Gullah than I am and I, where are you from? Wichita, Kansas. Wichita, Kansas, no you're not. <laughs> <laughs> all right, but, all right, but you, you got there somehow now. You you came from this same coast to get to Wichita. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how, but you see, you know, the the, 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 the during the slave trade, the, the folks that came from, let's say, Arkansas and Texas, they didn't come all the way to the coast to purchase, you know, 25, 100 slaves. They can't have purchased one or two. And they're one of the big guys. Because <laughs> they were taking them back and basically breeding. Right. I mean, it's it's a, it's I don't know if you, uh, you know, I, I noticed that in my lifetime, some 150 years later, that the Texans, black and white, are bigger than most Americans, size-wise. Everything's bigger in Texas. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I you know, I, 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 I met about three people from Texas in my life. They're born, raised, got their roots in Texas, and they're like six, 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 seven. Man, I thought I was big. <laughs> yeah. But that's, you know, that's the history behind that. So, yeah, Kansas, you're probably, I mean, we should tell you probably not, you know, Gullah directly, but you're probably Gullah indirectly, you see, because almost all the slaves came from Western Africa. The only difference in the Gullahs and the Chicago is the, the Gullahs stayed on the coast, lived with each other basically, maintained what their roots were, language, food ways, and other ways. You all I, I, I understood that some, some of that was able to happen because unlike Africa, Africa and other places, there wasn't that strong of an overseer. Uh, well, I, I touched on that. Exactly. That's really the islands were a lot more because saturated because of whites couldn't live on the, in the because heat. Because of the climate. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. what I thought. So the plantations on the coast were, well, a couple of reasons, a bunch of reasons, you know. You look back at the proximity of the slave trade and you know that if they're trading slaves out of Savannah and out of Charleston, where the leftovers going? Locally, locally. You know, anybody who's not sold, hey, I'll throw in those three guys over there. Charlie, you can have them. And that's how, you know, and he's glad to have them. And then that added to the mixture on the plantation, and that made the plantation more profitable because there are more people working on that plantation together than, you know, so elsewhere. So they, they became productive. So the Gullahs over here didn't really uh, have to wallow in the complete slave culture as they did maybe in 
other places. Right. Uh, was it wasn't uh, for many, yeah, them. for some some reasons, right. Uh, you know, and that didn't just end up in, the, in slavery now. As the as time expanded, I'll tell you about Hilton Head, you know, I mean, you know the history of, of, of blacks to, to a degree, I'm sure you do. Uh, I was about 13, 14 years old before I ever saw a Klansman. I grew up on Hilton Head, never seen a Klansman. Never, you know, don't know what they were. And I went to Savannah, I was 13 one day. I, that was the third time I had been to Savannah, <laughs> you know, in my life. But they were marching uh, on the streets of Savannah, and I was kind of like, wow, what are they doing? Yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but at the, at the same time, you know, people who were born in Mississippi or Alabama or other places the probably world. saw them from the time they were four or five. That's the difference in, you know, that culture and our culture, yeah. yeah. You know, on Hilton Head, you know, I grew up totally black, went to all black school all the way through high school, even though many of the places in America had integrated schools then. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's yeah. Yes, ma'am. Now, St. Helena, that's all black. Is that all black? St. Helena black? is not all black, no, but it's predominantly black. Yes. Yeah. St. Helena's got maybe about... I'll say 75% black. Yeah. Is that where the Gullahs, most of them, lived when they came here? No. no. They lived, you know, Hilton Head had more Gullahs after the Civil War than St. Than Helena did. Yeah, there were tens of thousands on Hilton Head. Where's yeah, St. Helena? Where's St. Helena? Where's St. Helena? Yeah. About 35 miles from here, north, oh. north of here. You know, there are some hundreds of islands, you know, up and down this course. You know, the Buford County itself is made up of about 40 islands. Just little islands packaged together. Of course, they put dirt and made the roads connect and bridges and stuff, but yeah, they're still so, islands. So when, when they leave the Caribbean, they, they, this is the way they came out? Yeah, and they left the Caribbean, they came up. Uh-huh. Right, you from the Caribbean? Yeah. Yeah, I can see it. I can, you see. can see it. Yeah, I can see it. I can see it. <laughs> he looks like a gullah to me. Well, I got the Caribbean's all gullah. There you go. <laughs> all right. All right, I'm going to sit here as we go through our travels and tell you more about the, the gullah people, the gullah people on the island, gullah people, period. And if you have questions, just call out. My name's Mel, and I'll be happy to entertain your questions. Thank you.